Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Mike here, Mike's Weather Page. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. We haven't had one of these in about a week or so, but it's time to start talking about the tropics. Looks like they are going to start waking up, as expected. So uh, we got a couple waves right above my head, these little yellow guys right there. We're going to talk about those here in a second. Um, definitely show you the latest. Um, appreciate you watching here on YouTube. If you like it, please subscribe. We're trying to get our YouTube channel up and uh, do more of these. Of course, we stream live daily at 919 Eastern right here on YouTube, most Monday through Friday, sometimes in the evening. Uh, Brew Crew subscribers get notices and text alerts when we do go live. All right, so what do we got cooking? Well, here we go. Big news last week was uh, National Hurricane Center came out with an uh, updated seasonal outlook. They do this uh, after their initial outlook, which is in like May or June, uh, usually. So kind of surprised, but they increased their numbers from what they originally predicted. And that was uh, last week. So they're expecting a pretty heavily weighted end of the season. Uh, nine to 16 more, nor more name storms, not counting the five we've already had. Uh, five to 10 hurricanes to come. And uh, of those two to five majors. So we're still looking at a pretty active end of the year. And I'm going to show you some reasons why. Colorado State University also updated their um, seasonal outlook. And they're calling for 13 more named storms. With eight of those being hurricanes and four of those being major hurricanes. So all the big dogs are predicting a pretty active uh, latter part of our season. Um, but typically in August, we start to see things ramp up. And uh, it's usually slow in July. It's the number one thing I get people talking to me all the time about. They're like, Mike, why is the season dead? Why is it, you know, season's the bust? Well, last year we didn't have anything in July and August. Usually it's slow in July. August is a little slower than usual. But, yes, uh, it's, it's showing signs picking up. Here's your chart kind of showing you history of August storms where the highest concentration is in red over the years. And then, of course, we get to September and boom, that's when things really get going. And then in October, lately, we have a lot of storms. A lot of them get going in the Caribbean to watch. Um, but here's what we got. Two circles. This is uh, uh, live as of Monday, August uh, 14th. Two areas that are expected to come off of Africa here and uh, possibly develop. A lot of our modeling that we use, this little guy has been around for a lot of years, showing pretty high colors. I uh, haven't seen that in a long time. Showing the two different spots to watch. And uh, this little guy here, an experimental model from FSU, showing all kinds of action. And, and what's this one here in the Gulf? I've been talking about this a lot. Uh, something possibly to watch. So this is bottom line. This is a week from today. This is next uh, Monday, the 22nd. We can see three areas. Now, these are the two yellow spots that are um, moved their way east or westward across the Atlantic. The first spot is a little bit lower. Number two has been tracking a little bit more to the north. But we also have a wave that's out in the Atlantic right now that might have a window of opportunity to be watching for in the Gulf of Mexico. This has been being discussed a little bit more now. I've been seeing it. I've been sharing some some, some modeling, but uh, signal, signals are showing possibility uh, of something this time next week. We could have something there in the Gulf of Mexico. Current look at satellite. We got an upper level low spinning here. This is uh, not tropical in nature. We have some juice starting to pop. Remember, we talked a lot about the African dust. It's really thick right now. But these waves out here, big ones are coming off of Africa. We look at Africa. This is a website called cyclonicwx.com. And man, uh, the juice and thunderstorm activity across Africa has been extremely strong. Last, last night, I posted some pretty big clusters of storms. So. It definitely appears Africa is going to be uh, increasing range, and that's been in the long-range forecast. Um, and I'm going to show you the current dust map here in a second, showing how the dust is looking like it's, it's reducing a little bit. But we love going to weathernerds.org. Uh, this is an ensemble plot showing you the progression of these low-pressure areas. And we'll put it in time. This one is Thursday uh, this week, and you can see the low pressure. This is number one on the yellow, and this is number two on the yellow. Um, and pretty much that first one's got a pretty decent chance of getting close to the Caribbean. Second one starting to do that lift, and they call that a recurve. Um, and then look what's popping here. This is next Sunday, Monday. Starting to see some, now the pressure's not that low yet, but it's a trend that it's definitely worth talking about. Um, 
couple things to note here because this is going off to the northwest high pressure is in place this is going to kind of uh, look into the future where this wave possibly could kind of follow along a little bit maybe more to the northwest um so that's going to be something to watch it's not official yet the nhc isn't marking it but down the road this is looking in next week middle of next week you can start to see uh the ensemble split uh, spreading out here so too early to tell where any of this is going but the trends are the first yellow area is going to have a better chance to get in that Caribbean and maybe be one to watch long range. And then possibly this area popping up here in the Gulf of Mexico. So this is the point of this video is the three areas to, to be aware of. The first two obviously uh, could affect some folks. Uh, this is kind of what the Europeans shown as far as infrared satellite goes. Let's just fast forward things to Friday. Here's uh, generally right here in the Caribbean. Let's go to Friday again and stop about right here. So here's Friday and there's our wave one. There's our wave two setting up. And then just kind of watch this whole juicy area here. This is actually currently uh, a wave that's about right here. Um, but as we get in time here, you can kind of see, watch the Gulf of Mexico going into next Monday, you know, starting to show quite a bit of uh, convection popping up. So the thing to worry about that possibly is sometimes models don't do a very good job at uh, strength initially. And it, if we have low shear environment in the Gulf of Mexico, and we have those hot water everybody's talking about, could be something to watch. These little surprise systems can pop up pretty quick. Uh, that high pressure is lifting out of here. Um, this is a surface chart for next Tuesday, a week from today, this, or uh, actually um, tomorrow, excuse me. Um, I'm thinking next week, but <laughs> we got a frontal line coming down. Uh, this H has been locked over the Gulf of Mexico for a month plus. That's why we have almost no rain in the Gulf, no rain in Florida, uh, unbelievably excessive heat warnings this high pressure system has, has created the heat in the gulf and also prevented any systems to even try to get going in the gulf of mexico well this frontal line is coming down this week midweek and what happens is that frontal line kind of pushes that high pressure out of the way a little bit look at all this juice coming florida's going to get a lot of rain the end of this week because of this frontal line as we get into the weekend, this is Friday, because we have a weaker high pressure area, there's going to be a little bit more uh, ability for this thing to come wrapping around the main Bermuda high. So it would take a front to, to break down the high to enable anything to pull north, and that's kind of what's happening here. So the second wave, the one that's on the NHC radar right now, uh, this one, this is all going to depend on high pressure building back in. Um, so it's going to have a chance to lift, and depending on how strong or high it is, we'll have to see how if it even becomes anything. Um, but that's just a little tidbit of what's going on with that cold front coming down. Um, other thing we're going to look at here is your dust map. All right, so this is your 10-day dust map. Currently, this is what we got cooking right now. That is African dust from the Saharan Desert, about as strong a signal, signal as you can get. Um, purples and oranges are very thick. Uh, comp uh, composite showing the uh, dust in the air. Dust dries up the atmosphere, bottom line. Dust is like kryptonite to Superman. But as we get along with time here, we get into the 17th, 18th, 19th. Watch those colors kind of fade away a little bit. And as we get into next week, look at that. We got a lot of gaps here in the dust map. So the dust appears to be lightening up a little bit. So that's one thing that could help anything get going. So the point the point of all this from here on out is just to show you conditions that are usually help tropical systems get going. The, the dust has prevented tropical systems in, in the last few weeks, which is normal in July, not so much early August, but anyway, long range dust maps are looking like they're thinning out. There's still some there, but not like we're seeing now. This is, this is now, this is later. This is now, <laughs> this is next week. So you can see that. The other thing we look at is something called the MJO. I talk about it a lot. You can Google it. Madeline Ju uh, Julian Oscillation, uh, MJO for short. Just Google MJO weather. <laughs> it's a phase of uh, rising air, sinking air. Basically, uh, when you have the green, rising air enables thunderstorms. So anytime we get a velocity signature like this, 
or MJO is enhanced thunderstorm activity has a, an easier chance to get going when it does when we have sinking air in yellow. So that's just, you know, number two, dust might lighten up. MJO is going to get a little bit more enhanced. Long range precipitation maps. This is on tropicaltidbits.com. Uh, long range September, October, November. Same for August, showing increased uh, monsoonal rains from Africa, which we've already showed. So just pointing out the fact that they're expecting a later season um, activity. Uh, a lot of modeling suggesting lower shear, wind shear, and this increased rain. So things are definitely, in my opinion, um, even though we have El Nino, you know, El Nino usually brings a lot of wind shear down here in the Caribbean, but we've also seen El Nino years really have to watch um, Western Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. So there you have it, latest and greatest. SpaghettiModels.com is the website. You can check it out, Google Mike's weather page. Um, and like I said, we go live quite a bit, and everything you need to know on the tropics is right here. And we appreciate it. So there you go, weather in a nutshell, 5 o'clock somewhere. All right, we'll be live tomorrow, Tuesday, 9, 19 a.m., and we'll do another breakdown of what's uh, what the overnight models have shown. All right, have a good evening. Bye-bye.